China's vast coastal defense missile network tested in new anti-shipping exercises. The YJ-20 is a hypersonic anti-ship aeroballistic missile, featuring biconic aerodynamic configuration. The missile was first observed during the preparation of the 2025 China Victory Day Parade in August 2025. The missile was officially revealed at the parade on 3 September, 2025. In 2022, an unidentified hypersonic missile was revealed by the Chinese Navy ahead of its 73rd anniversary, launching from a universal vertical launch system of the Type 055 destroyer. The Chinese Navy did not reveal the missile's designation, but defense analysts at that time believed it to be the ship-launched version of the YJ-21. However, with the emergence of the YJ-20 hypersonic missile in 2025, which has a more closely aligned shape to the unidentified missile launched by Type 055, analysts believe these were two separate missile developments. The YJ-20 is a hypersonic anti-ship ballistic missile, featuring a biconic aerodynamic configuration. The configuration allows for maneuverable re-entry after its initial ballistic launch. The missile can be launched from surface vessels. China's vast coastal defense missile network tested in new anti-shipping exercises, the Chinese Coastal Defense Network deployed under the People's Liberation Army Navy's Eastern Theater Command has been put through a series of combat exercises, which were held in unfamiliar terrain to test and improve battlefield adaptability during high-tempo operations. The unnamed Coastal Missile Regiment involved focused on rapid deployment and strike coordination, conducting long-range cross-regional maneuvers before carrying out live-fire training. Early warning systems involved rapidly identified incoming targets, transmitting real-time data over secure data links to the command post, allowing multiple assault groups to be coordinated to quickly plot optimized strike paths. Assault teams executed synchronized missile launches against simulated maritime targets, with deployment in a new more decent-released formation reported to increase engagement efficiency. The Chinese People's Liberation Army's coastal defenses are considered the most formidable in the world, and deploy a wide range of mobile cruise missile systems capable of engaging targets far out to sea. The majority of launchers in the arsenal are equipped with YJ-12 and YJ-62 anti-ship cruise missiles, although hypersonic missiles such as the YJ-20 are expected to also be brought into service of future launchers. The YJ-20 could therefore be a maneuverable or hybrid missile that combines aerodynamic maneuvering with ballistic speed. Carrier Killers? Analysts suggest these weapons are designed for both anti-ship and land attack roles, posing a sophisticated and direct threat to US aircraft carriers and forward bases across the Pacific. The reveal underscores the rapid modernization of China's military and its focus on challenging American force projection. The YJ-17 and YJ-19 could be new hypersonic missiles. The YJ-15 could be a new supersonic missile capable of speeds of up to 768 miles per hour, which the YJ-20 could be something even more interesting, a biconical missile that flies partly like a ballistic missile but which uses aerodynamic lift during flight. In effect, the YJ-20 could therefore be a maneuverable or hybrid missile that combines aerodynamic maneuvering with ballistic speed. If analysts are correct, it could mean that the YJ-20 is similar to the weapon system rumored to be deployed on China's Type 055 destroyer using its vertical launch system. American operations in the Red Sea and elsewhere have shown good intercept capability against threats presented. Chinese capabilities may be both more sophisticated and drawn on deeper stockpiles of American missile interceptors. Aircraft Carrier Killer Missiles? For Washington, these new missiles matter because they appear to be designed to challenge U.S. carrier groups and forward bases across the Pacific. 
Once operational, they could complicate American force projection either in a scenario where China makes moves in Taiwan or a conflict breaks out in the South China Sea. And while Chinese President Xi Jinping reportedly told US President Donald Trump that he would not invade Taiwan while he is in office, it could well happen during the next administration and Beijing will have had time to deploy and manufacture these new missiles at scale. Although coastal defense networks are relied on heavily by states which lack sizable surface navies, such as Russia, Vietnam, and North Korea, China has continued to invest in such capabilities despite fielding one of the world's most formidable surface fleets. The service entry of new generations of much longer-ranged and more capable cruise missiles, and the significantly improvement of reconnaissance capabilities over the East China Sea, Yellow Sea, Sea of Japan and South China Sea, allows coastal defense systems to play much greater roles in regional contingencies. The proximity of many key hotspots to the coastline of the Chinese mainland, including the Taiwan Strait and surrounding waters, is a further contributor to these systems' high importance for China's defense. Exercises saw a number of scenarios simulated in which initial salvos failed to fully neutralize their targets, at which time reserve units would conduct immediate follow-up strikes. One such scenario saw a hostile ship attempt to evade destruction following an initial wave of missile attacks, with the command post using updated reconnaissance data to rapidly deploy a second strike group to finish off the target. The Coastal Defense Regiment also tested its new counter-drone capabilities, implementing a three-layered defense system integrating electronic jamming, kinetic intercepts, and camouflage techniques to degrade the reconnaissance and strike capabilities of hostile unmanned aircraft. One scenario saw decoy assets deployed to confuse and divert hostile drone surveillance. Although coastal defenses are relied on far less heavily than during the Cold War era, they have continued to receive funding for sustainment and large-scale new procurements, with their costs remaining low despite the outsized impact that could potentially have on a regional conflict.